Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is a video series three, part six. This is the last part of video series three. As you may know, the legitimacy of a state government is a hot topic in the society today. A state government could face the question whether it is legitimate or not. There could be many answers to this question. The discussion could lead to social unrest and even civil wars. One of the causes for the problem is that legitimacy has no solid definition. In this part, I would like to share with you some highlight on how the legitimacy is defined in the new state theory and its consequences. I would like to start with the legitimacy problem in general. Simple to say, legitimacy means self-confidence and the confidence of others in oneself. Anyone in a human society faces a legitimacy problem in a different degree. When you talk to audience, you need self-confidence, you need the confidence of other people in yourself too. In many cases, especially when you speak to a big group or write an article, you may not be for sure. This is a legitimacy problem. In the new theory, the legitimacy problem is the result of the conflict between the known purpose and the curiosity properties of the mankind and the purpose and the certainty driving property of the human society. It means that legitimacy problem is a fundamental problem. A common solution to the legitimacy problem is to use a reference. This is why people like to quote what a famous people said. It gave you a reference and solved your legitimacy problem. A big theory needs a big reference. It is why the books of Plato and Rousseau are often quoted. For instance, some people would quote what Rousseau said when they talk about democracy. If you would use an absolute reference for your theory, the other people could, not, could only believe you or not believe you, but they could not argue against you. This practice is used in religions and also in politics today. Many abstract words such as freedom, democracy, common interest, working class are used nowadays in politics for that purpose. A basic state theory needs the biggest and the absolute reference. Plato used Zeus as the reference for the morals in his state theory. Rousseau used the nature as the absolute reference in his state theory. A state theory needs also to cover as complete as possible the relevant basic aspect of the state. In my book, I did some comparison between the state theory of Plato, Rousseau, and the new state theory. The drawing is an illustration of the conclusion. As you could see, the new state theory is the best in both reference and content because the four original wills of the mankind and the four social wills of the human society are related to the universe and the living beings and they are very detailed too. 
The analysis in my book has resulted in four legitimacy criteria for the state government. As you may remember from the previous part, the importance of the social public wealth of the state. It is the duty of the state government to execute the social public wealth. Since the state is driven by the basic public wealth of the state, the state government should satisfy the basic public wealth of the state. The social public interests of the states are concrete and have a dominant position in the operation of the state. The state government should realize them. In the end, the state government is aimed at protecting the basic right, namely the basic freedom and the basic interest of all the individuals in the states. They are concrete, visible to everyone in the state. It is the final judgment of all the people in the state on their government. As you could see in the previous slides, the new legitimacy criteria for the state government are simple and straightforward but they have far-reaching consequences. First, the new legislative criteria shift the focus from the complex human society to the relatively simple mankind. In the new state theory, the mankind is the center of the gravity and the human society should serve the mankind. This simplifies many discussions in the state theory. Second, the new legitimacy criteria doesn't include directly the traditional elements, such as the national border, history, religion, nationality, cultural power, and international recognition, and etc. These traditional elements are included in the social public wealth of the states and are treated properly in the right place in the new state theory. As I explained in part one of this video series, the uncertainties in the state theory of Rosso is partly responsible for the problems in the execution of some state series nowadays. The new state theory removed these uncertainties. The new legitimate criteria could be used by any state government nowadays to improve itself regardless its background. The new state theory has many advantages, at least a few here. The new legitimacy criteria are solid, concrete, and transparent. The state government can focus on its duty of today. Also, there's no room left for empty promise of politicians. The citizen of the state can monitor the performance of the state government and the officials with the concrete and transparent legitimacy criteria. The new legitimacy criteria can be used to judge any existing state government and to generate advices for further improvement. I would like to share with you three examples here. First, the government of an underdeveloped country doesn't meet the legitimate criteria. In such a country, there's no challenging and competitive social environment. The will of individual efficiency of the majority is not 
fully excited and utilized. We see this phenomenon in many underdeveloped countries. Second, the government of a developing country may be in some extent in short of meeting the legitimacy criteria. In such a country, the social efficiency and the social stability have the lead. The original wills of the majority is suppressed. It is good for fast growth of a simple economy, but it suppresses the creativity people feel unhappy. We see this in some developing countries. A big danger for a faster developing country is that the confidence of the social elite in the social will of group efficiency could become very high or extremely high. They could try to use the social wills of group efficiency to solve all the problems in the country. This would suppress the original wills of the majority further, and that could kill the dynamics and kill the economy in the end. Third example, the government of a developed country may also be in some extent in short of meeting the legitimate criteria. In such a country, the role of social wills of group efficiency is reduced for the majority. People feel more happy. But the role of social wills of group efficiency for the social elite, such as politicians and the government officials, could be increased. That would reduce their will of individual efficiency. They would become less creative, less capable, and more bureaucratic. This could slow down the economy and impact the daily life of people in the states. We see this in some developed countries. In the previous slides, I mentioned the risk that a developing country is facing when the state government is become too dependent on the usage of the social will of group efficiency in tackling the problems in the country. Any country or organization or family face this kind of risk too because the social will of group efficiency is the cornerstone of the society today. Any state government or organization or families therefore face a dilemma. On the one side, the social will of group efficiency is needed to increase the social efficiency and the social stability, but it increases directly or indirectly the social will of group disaster. Excessive usage of it increases substantially the risk one faces. In the new state theory, the mankind, but not the human society, is the center of gravity. It provides a better alternative for the states to achieve sufficient efficiency and stability and keep people happy and creative. I list three examples here. First, to increase the individualism of all people by reducing the virtual individualism. It means to restore the natural morals of the people by reducing the manipulation by social morals. This will generate the energy and the efficiency by the individuals, which will then benefit the states in both social efficiency and stability. Second, to minimize 
enhancing order. It means less suppression of diversity and less not meaningful regulations. Many rebellions in the history were caused by some very trivial and meaningless measures from the authorities. Third, to minimize enhanced group interaction, it means less bureaucracy, less manipulation, and less interference in the work and the life of the people. Nowadays, we see some companies failed after they centralized the power and the company structures. They could also avoid the failure if they would use the alternative ways as we discussed here. The definitions in part five of this video series have set the foundation for the operation of the state's government. I would like to make a few remarks here. First, the four original wills of the mankind should always be the reference for the operation of the state's government. Second, the social elite and the majority of the states have different tasks in the state of field. The processes should be transparent. This is possible in the framework of the new state theory. Third, the establishment of the social public wills of the states is very essential. I discussed the supervision of the state's government and government officials in my book. I would like to mention two points here. First, the new legitimacy criteria should be used in the supervision of the government and government officers. Second, the two stages corruption model from part three of this video series should be used also in the supervision of the government officers. The new state theory can answer many difficult questions in the social sciences. I solved some of them in my book. For instance, a worldwide uh, utopia is a dream in some existing state series. People hope that all the drawbacks in the existing social systems would disappear in the Utopia. In the new state theory, such a worldwide utopia is impossible. The reason is simple. A worldwide utopia needs a huge organization. The organization needs social wills and the social elite with very strong social wills. The drawbacks of the strong social wills will manifest in the new utopia. The strong social will of group efficiency will result in a strong social will of group disaster, leading to the collapse of the utopias. Another example is a worldwide super state. People think it would prevent wars and other evils. In the new state theory, such a worldwide state is impossible. The reason is also simple. A worldwide super state means its social public wealth will contain infinity elements the social public wills will lose control on the social wills of the states and the individuals. The abuse of the social wills and damages to the basic rights of the individuals 
will happen unchecked. The strong social will of the group disaster will lead to the collapse of the super states. I would like to make a few end remarks for this video series. In this video series, I have shared with you some highlights on my book, The Philosophy Foundation of the States. The four original wills of the mankind and the four social wills of the human society are the zero reference for the book. The book sets a solid philosophical foundation for the state. Some sensitive top topics such as personal freedom, personal right, human right, social equality, privacy, private properties are discussed and redefined. This may take some people out of their comfort zones. I must say that I wrote this book with my love in the mankind and the human society. This video presentation is too short for me to share with you the full content of the book. I hope that the book would be published soon. With this remark, I would like to close part 6 of video series 3. This is also the end of video series 3. Thank you for your attention.